Amen. Welcome, CCF family. As again, I, you, as usual, um, when I'm before you, I always say it is, it is great to be amongst the presence of adults. Good morning. Uh, usually, I'm back serving um, our youngest um, kids. Um, first, I want to say, last Sunday we had a parent meeting in the Kids Hub, and I just want to say a big thank you to all the parents that showed up to that meeting. Can you please give those parents um, a round of applause? It's very helpful. We're looking forward to seeing uh, how we can better serve that, that area and how parents could be better equipped to, to do so. And so also, over the last few weeks, we've experienced some growth among our youth on Friday nights, our middle and high school students. Um, there are a lot of things that stand out um, about our youth at CCF. Now, one of those things is their consistency. Uh, they prioritize being present. Uh, they look forward to being here. Uh, out of the many things that a middle or high school student can be getting into on, on a Friday night, they choose to be here. Um, the second thing that really stands out is their maturity. I've had a lot of really serious conversations about the things of God, and they can hold it because they take the word seriously. And we make sure that, we make sure that they can uh, have those conversations about the word of God here. Sometimes I can even overhear some of the conversations that, that they are having. And it's just really, really be beautiful to see that they are making their faith their own, and it's not just their parents' faith. Uh, the third thing is that they are very connected. Uh, many of our youth are not just here on Fridays, but they are here on, on Sundays. Um, some of them bring themselves to church. Some of them uh, are, are probably urging their parents to get them here. Uh, but the fourth thing is their friendship. And really, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So really, our, our, our youth and, um, and adults are kind of talking about the same things in the month of February. Obviously, a few days from now is, is Valentine's Day, and so um, February is a great month to talk about relationships. And what's really been uh, amazing is that over the last two weeks, we have uh, kept our middle and high school students together, and, and we've talked about relationships from a biblical perspective. The first week, we, we talked about friendship, and, and last Friday, we talked about singleness and dating. So for our youth in the room, this is going to be sort of a review, all right? Uh, but really, what, what those conversations have allowed is it allows us as youth leaders to hear, you know, how our younger generations are thinking about relationships, and it gives us an opportunity for um, even our, our youngest mi middle school students uh, to start thinking biblically about how they relate to one another. Um, so th uh, this is actually the third time that we've done a relationship series with our, our youth. And again, it's great that now CCF in the, uh, in, on Sunday mornings is seeking with, it's in sync with what's happening on Friday nights and vice versa. So relationships are such an integral part of our lives as new creatures or, or new creations in Jesus. So, and before I invite our panel up, I, wanna, I want us to take a short look at what Scripture has to say about relationships. So right away, in the first book of the Bible, we see that there are six days of creation. We see God created, creating everything ex nihilo, ex nihilo, or out of nothing. And then he, gets, he says that everything is good on day, after day one, after day two, after day three, and all the other days. When we get to day six, when he creates Adam, he realize, he, that is the first time that we see that, it is, that something is not good. God says that it is not good for Adam to be alone. And as we talked about last week um, here, here in the worship center, uh, we, we, uh, we talked about marriage and, and, how, and how it reflects Christ's relationship with, with, with his church. And in, in Adam's case, God gave him his wife, but that is not the only companionship that the Scripture talks about. God did not create us to be by ourselves. He did not create us to be on an island. So we even go into the New Testament, uh, one of the first things that, that happens is Jesus is calling disciples, and he's calling people to surround himself, and then they're surrounding each other. And then once Jesus departs, it is the Holy Spirit that comes, and he dwells in the believer, and he's calling those believers to come and, and congregate together, to not forsake the assembly as we see in Hebrews. John 15, Jesus says, greater love has no one than this than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you, do, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. 
for our, our, our high school and middle school students who have been going through the book of Romans. And uh, one of the last chapters in chapters 15, we see Paul write this. We who are strong ought to bear with the feelings of the weak and, not, and to not please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good, to build them up. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. So that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the uh, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. We see later in the book of Philippians, Paul is calling those who are listening to them uh, to take on the mind of Christ in relationship to each other, who Jesus is being very, the very nature of God and not consider equality of God something to be grasped. Uh, our, our Lord and Savior came down to live on, on this earth, to eat, with, 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 to eat with sinners, to relate to, to others. And if we turn back a few pages, we can even look at the Proverbs. And even on Friday nights, we, we talked about how the Proverbs gives us instructions for um, being a good friend. It gives you, it talks about the importance of, of finding a good friend, make sure that you're finding good friends, and also what a bad friend is. Iron sharpens iron, so as one person sharpens another. This, this idea that if you have a good friend, right, that they will help shape your, your character in, in a positive way. But the vice versa is also true. If we surround ourselves with bad company, it corrupts good morals, corrupts our character. A perverse person stirs up conflict, Proverbs 16, 28 says, and a gossip separates close friends. The righteous choose their friends carefully, Proverbs 12, 26, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. So the Word of God has a lot to say about our friendships. And so we can conclude that Jesus cares about our relationships, and he cares about the friendships that we make. Um, I had a pastor one time say that one of his uh, most important jobs was teaching people how to make friends with each other. And I think that's just a very true thing. That's something that, is, that has come with me all, all over the last few years. We don't just want people to be here and then leave. We want you guys to be connected to each other. We want to see long-lasting relationships. Um, and with, with that said, I want to invite my panelists up to the, the couches. Um, we have Emery. Come up. Kim. <laughs> Joanna. Yeah. Abraham. And Eliram. Ms. June, I'm going to borrow your stool over here. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, you guys can start off by just introducing yourselves. We'll start over here with, with the ladies. Uh, my, name, my name is Emery. Oh, hello. We're supposed to have greetings. Mm hmm. Uh, my name is Emery. I'm in the 10th grade, and I go to Duke Ellington School of the Arts in Washington, D.C. There we go. We're good. Does it work? Let's try this one. Um, Are we on? Okay. Great. Let's start over. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, Nate. Can you give a hand to Nate, please? Go ahead. Hello. My name is Emery Hedox Rossiter. I'm in the 10th grade, and I go to Duke Ellington School of the Arts in Washington, D.C. Hello. My name is Johanna Oda. I'm 12, and I go to Thomas Johnson Middle School. My name is Kim, and I've graduated, but I am a teacher. I am a teacher at Lanham Christian School down the street in Lanham. My name is Abraham, and I'm in 10th grade, and I'm 16. My name is Laram Oda. I'm related to her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I go to Charles Herbert Flyers, and I'm a 10th grader. Thank you, guys. So, and you guys can choose to answer. Um, any of the questions I'm about to ask. So my first question is, is it easy for you to make friends? 
Um, I would say it is easy, pretty easy for me to make friends just because I feel like I'm an extrovert. Uh-huh. I like to be, I love people in general, so I feel like I'll click with people easily. Everybody's a people person, all right? Yes. Anybody else? Go ahead. Um, oh, you want to go ahead? I'll, I'll just say real quickly, it's a little bit harder for me to make friends because I'm a little bit more of an introvert. Like, I like being around people, but sometimes it's hard for me to reach out to people and take that first step to people because I can be a little bit reserved. So it's a little bit harder for me to make friends even though I do like people. For me, it's um, both hard and easy at the same time, only because of the fact that like, when, you're, when you're trying to go up to somebody, especially when you don't know them, you don't know anything about them. And for me, especially when I don't know anything about you and I probably don't have a common interest with you, I'm trying to figure out a way to open a conversation or make something happen or talk uh, in something that we can start talking about. Maybe it's I don't like the teacher and you don't like the teacher and we're both c and ex uh, and that's what's going to get me to click and that's we what's going to open. We do have a, t a Duval teacher in the room right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like, so yeah. Eli, Rowe, you want to answer that? All right. I'll answer. Go ahead. Uh, for me, it's really easy to make friends because I talk a lot, like a lot. <laughs> I'll just come up to you and be like, hi, and then I'll start telling you about my life and stuff. So. Yes. So uh, something that I've, I sort of had to navigate since, uh, since being here at CCF is realizing um, that for some of our students, it is very easy to make friends. So some students, it's easy for them to jump in, build relationships, uh, but that's not always the case. And a, I think that not only translates with, um, with youth, I think that also works with adults too. Yeah. I think some of us adults sometimes have an easy time making friends and building connections, but, but sometimes uh, some of us may be more introverted. Sometimes it takes a little more to make a friend. Sometimes it takes a little more effort for someone to be considered a friend. So um, at CCF, I've had to sort of navigate, okay, well, how, how can I make sure that someone is really feeling connected, especially if they're here for the first time? Right, so um, we, I think all of us as a church body need to make sure that we are recognizing, you know, when someone needs a little extra work to feel connected, all right? Now for my next question, what makes a good friend? Who wants to start? What makes a good friend? Um, a good friend is someone who's loyal, who'll stick by your side even when others don't. Okay. Um, I would say somebody who has your best interest at heart at all times and always wants what's best for you. I want to add on to what Emery said. Uh, definitely someone who can keep you accountable for what you're doing. Can we, uh, I want to ask a little more, more about that. What does it mean to keep someone accountable, Elira? I guess uh, for every action that they do, you like uh, give them advice on whether or not, like for me, whether or not it's like biblical. Okay. In that sense. Very good. I think like trust is a very important part of like being a friend. Cause like, I think I should be able to like trust you, like be able to leave my phone in an area and like leave for like an hour and come back and like my phone will be there. And like, <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's very important. Cause I think, cause, cause I think it's very important. Cause if you can't even trust someone with something as simple as like, a phone or anything else, then I don't think you probably should be next to that person if you can't even <laughs> trust them with anything. What makes a good friend? We good? So uh, normally, uh, we like to see ourselves as the good friend, right? Normally, even when we read through Scripture, we, we want to see ourselves as the hero and the hero all the time. Now, have any of you ever been a bad friend? And would you like to share? <laughs> you, uh, Joanna wants to know why I was looking at her. I wasn't looking at you, Joanna. Yes, you were. You want to share? Go ahead. I think I've been a bad friend before. Like, I've definitely multiple times. Definitely there's like things that I've said, maybe I hurt someone, like their feelings or something I didn't was, it's like especially uh, I had this one friend in eighth grade and we were just, uh, this is a long, like no long before Jesus, you know that, right? And um, 
but before Jesus, right? Yeah, but like we 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 were always playing around in eighth grade. We always had the same classes together. Every one of us, it was just the four of us, and we always there was just one of us that we constantly always like would make certain jokes about, and we would always do it to each other. But I think he got a little bit he. He took it a little bit more personal than we did. We didn't find a fault in it, but we always ignored it because sometimes he would get really red and like he'd get upset, and we would just kind of laugh it off and play it off. But like seeing him now, like he kind of doesn't want to talk to us. And I was like, I was wondering why. I, I was I was trying to talk to him once, and I get why he didn't want to talk to us anymore. And just like yeah, and I think in that instance, like I definitely was in a good friend in that place. Thanks for sharing that, Abraham. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think I've been a bad friend. People said I'm mean, but you know, I'm not mean, so. Like before, I've, I've done a lot of things. I, hmm, like a lot. I had this one friend, well, it didn't happen too long ago, but it's basically like, okay, so like, she had a problem with like her hygiene and stuff like that, right? And they would like talk behind her back and stuff like that. and. They would like tell me, oh, don't tell her and stuff, right? And I would like try to fit in. I'd be like, oh yeah, like you like this and that. And I'd just be really fake. But when she'd come to me, I'd be like, oh, I think she'd get better friends. But then I would go behind her back and then talk about her, laugh mm. about it and stuff like that. And she talked to me about it. She told me like how they treated her and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, like they're bad friends. You should get new friends, you know, like better friends. They don't treat you well. And then. I would talk about her again. But, and then now I felt kind of bad for talking about her because, I mean, because like, she doesn't really have good friends. So it's like, I should be a good friend because like, I'm a Christian. So I kind of stopped doing that. So, yeah. Thank you for your transparency. Um, <clears throat> I would say I have been a bad friend, like just in general. There have been times where I've betrayed somebody's trust, where I have lied. Like she said, talk about somebody behind their back. And I really do feel bad. And yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you guys for sharing that. Uh, go ahead. Uh, there was this one time in elementary, this dude named Aluanka. Um, uh, and I'm not trying to be funny or anything, but like uh, we would play Beyblade together because like Beyblade was a thing in fifth, fifth grade. Right? And Elias, if he's here, he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's right there. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we used to play Beyblade, um, and I just remember like every time he would want to like hang out with us, like because I, I had another friend, his name was Amadou. We would ha I would hang out with him, and every time Oluwanka would come, I'd be like I switch up. I I go like, bro, why are you here? And and like one time, um, I, I don't remember what he did, but he started smiling, and I straight up just told him stop smiling, and. I don't, I don't know why I did that, but now I regret it, and I hope to see him again and apologize. But It takes a lot. It takes yourself a really, wow, thank you guys. It takes a lot for you guys to allow the Holy Spirit to really convict you of the times that you have been a bad friend. I think a lot of us have had those moments where we've been a bad friend, and sometimes it's hard for us to say, wow, I was a really bad friend, right? Uh, so my next question is, uh, what is a Christ-centered friendship? What is a Christ-centered friendship? Um, I think it's a friendship where, like, like Alarm said, you keep each other accountable. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't gossip. Like, if one of you, like, ends up in a situation where, like, people are talking about a certain person or something, and, like, you get yourself involved in it, I think it'd be like where the friend will tell you, like, oh, don't do this and don't do that. Like, they would tell you, remind you of, like, what the Bible says and stuff. So, yeah. Very good. I think someone who um, tells you the truth despite what you want to hear. I think a lot of times what people think a good friend is someone just who supports no matter what. And I don't think that's exactly a good friend because if I'm doing something foolish and my friend is encouraging me and egging me on, 
and the end result is not good because I'm doing something foolish, I wouldn't think that that was a good friend because you knew that my decision was foolish. Maybe I was blinded in the moment or about how I felt. And we just have this idea that a friend supports no matter what. And I don't think that's true. I think a friend is someone who is honest with you despite how you may take their honesty. Um, and so yes, a friend should support, but I think a friend should also support in wisdom and someone who tells you the truth, even if you don't exactly want to hear the truth. Yeah, very good. I think a Christ-centered uh, friendship is one where the person is building you up in character that to fit the character of God. And that means by like, let's say for example, you're struggling with something and you need, and you're some type of addiction, whether that's alcohol, whatever it may be that you're struggling with, and that friend comes along and like, like gives you advice, helps you through it, and not just like simply just helping you through it, but also like praying with you, giving you guidance in, su in, su in, s in areas of your life that you might need to fix, helping you through these types of things. Uh, that's, I think that's very. Very good, thank you. So uh, how many of you guys have friends that are not believers in Jesus? Yeah, good. Now, my next question for you guys, is how, do, you, do we, well, do, first of we have close friends that are not believers in Jesus. Yeah, right? So are there differences in your friendships with people who are in Christ versus people that are not in Christ? Is there a difference in your friendships between people that do believe in Jesus and people that don't believe in Jesus? Let's uh, talk about that for a little bit. Go ahead, we'll let Abraham start. I think there's like massive differences, like for sure, like the, the things you're talking about. I mean, of course, we talk, you're gonna talk about normal things too, just with, just with people who believe and who don't as well. But I think it's a lot different. The conversations are gonna be a lot crazier. You're probably gonna hear certain words that you might be like, mm, let me not say that. No, let me not get into that, you know? And they're gonna probably say, talk about certain things that you probably just shouldn't be around talking about. And it's a lot, and sometimes it can be a little harder because like you wanna, you wanna, you're the friend and you've known them so, so long, especially for like me, some of my friends that are non-believers are, I've known them since elementary. So it's like every conversation we've, uh, that we uh, normally, when we talk, I'm always in every conversation, we're always talking. And it's hard at times when you're, when we're getting to a certain direction and a certain type of conversation, we probably, they like, we all shouldn't be getting to and then to just not get into that with them and, and it's completely different from when like you're with someone who believes you don't have to deal with that like I have to pitch in on this thing to not feel weird like I haven't like you know. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so I think for me I didn't really know there was a difference until I knew. I don't know how to explain it. So like growing up majority of my friends like they would claim to be Christian but they wouldn't really, you wouldn't really see it in their actions. And so I think it was, ooh, I don't know, like probably like two months ago, and I was at like, I do a, events like with Boys and Girls Club, and so I was at a Boys and Girls Club event, and I was going on a panel like this, and I was like freaking out before, because I was like really nervous. And one of my friends, she like pulled me aside and she prayed for me, and like that has never happened to me, but like that a friend my age can like pray for me like that. So I was like, once I really saw that difference, it was like, oh, this is like, she acts so much different. Like I would rather call her for advice than any of my school friends. So yeah. Um, I think one other thing is like, um, I guess like one has conviction and the other one doesn't. So like. Like Ibrahim said, when you get into certain conversations, you gotta like watch what you say because first of all, you're gonna have to give account for every word you say on Judgment Day. And second of all, Jesus says it's not what comes into man that defiles him, but what comes out. And especially when you're a Christian, like there's just certain things you can't be saying because you're an ambassador of Christ. Like you, you re represent Christ. And so like if you're out here doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, like, you, there's no, unless you, like, don't feel any conviction, I don't see why a Christian should be doing that. So I think, like, that's one major difference. Yeah. I think um, it can be difficult because you do, especially a close friend that's a non-believer, you have 
um, different values, but I also think it's important to, to stay with your convictions towards that friend and um, continue to just represent Christ in whatever friendship you're in. And I'm thankful that God has been working in my heart to do that because now when I'm around my non-believing friends that are like really close, um, they know certain things about me and they won't even do those things in my presence. Like they'll say, oh, Kim's coming in the car, change the song, you know? Or even like <laughs> my sister will be like, is it okay if I play this song, you know? So like also it can be very difficult because you think like what is this person gonna say about me or they think I'm being like too Christian or whatever, but also building up that reputation for yourself or your friends and if, even if they're non-believers, if they're, they're your true friends, they will give you that respect. And there's this one friend that I have I've known her ever since elementary school, and we're still friends to this day, and she's not a believer, but she knows that there are certain things that I don't do. There are certain things that she doesn't, there are certain places she doesn't ask me to go. There are certain things that she doesn't do in front of me. Now, she'll do it in front of her other friends, <laughs> but she won't do it in front of me, yet we're still really close friends because she's a non-believer, but we also have mutual respect for each other. She knows, hey, this is not the kind of stuff Kim does. Don't do it in front of her. So I, I think from a biblical perspective, there's a lot that a Christian has to wrestle with according to what, what the Scripture says about how we are amongst non-believers. And James says we cannot be friends with the world, right? And then Paul says do not be unequally yoked with, um, with, with non-believers. And usually we, when we hear that yoke passage, we think about marriage, but really Paul is talking about a- anyone. And so... Um, and then Paul says, when he's talking about uh, how, we, how Christians are held to a high, higher standard, he says he's talking about the body of Christ, not, not the ones who do not claim to love Christ. So there's always something where we're wrestling with uh, when it comes to be equally yoked, which I have my, I've got to send my picture to the, the slide team. Uh, when we're talking about being yoked, we're talking about um, animals that are linked together and they're working the field. And if there is one animal that is stronger than the other, then the field would, would not get worked. And so really, when it comes to being equally yoked or unequally yoked, we're talking about influence, right? So as Christians, it's important that we are guarding our, our, our hearts to make sure that we are not being more influenced by, by, by our friends who are not of Christ. Make sure, we are being, make sure that we are being the influencer um, and make sure that we are being influenced more by those who are in Christ. Um, but the love should be the same. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so these animals are equally yoked, all right? If, the, if one cow turns to the right, I think the other one will decide to do the same. Uh, but if we had a bull and, and a goat, then nothing will get accomplished, all right? So my, my next question for you guys is, have you ever leveraged friendship to share the gospel? Have you ever, in the context of friendship, tried to share Jesus with someone. Elyram, you want to start? Go ahead. Sure. Um, and not to boast, but um, yeah, I, I've, I've done it. And like, a lot of times the outcome is they don't want to talk to you anymore. And you know, like as a follower of Christ, like that's what you should expect anyway. You expect that. Why, why should you expect, expect that though? Because uh, Jesus says, if the world hates you, remember that they hated me first. Like, so if they rejected Christ, who is your Lord, then they're, they're definitely going to reject you because a servant is not greater than his master. Mm-hmm. So then, like, as a follower of Christ, once you know that, you should, you should be like, okay, I can't live for myself anymore. Um, or I'm not living for myself anymore. It's Christ living through me. And even though people are not going to like me, they're not going to um, want to hang around me, every chance I get, I should just use it as an opportunity to glorify God. Mm-hmm. We'll go this side. Um, yeah, I have, like, I have this non-Christian friend, and, like, at first, I didn't really talk to her, but, like, after she said she wasn't Christian, I kind of, like, try to, like, become really friends with her, and I would send them, like, stuff and videos about like Jesus, even though she doesn't believe and stuff. And I also have this friend, Esther, <clears throat> that came once. I had invited her. When we had stopped being friends last year, I kind of like 
it wasn't just because of like my mom talked to me, I became friends with them again. It was also because like I wanted her to be more with Christ because she's like not really, yeah. So I kind of talked to her mom and stuff and I'll be like, because her mom told me like, oh, she's not really a good friend, she shouldn't hang out with her. And I was like, oh, but I want to hang out with her because I want her to change. Like mm-hmm. I want her to be more Christ-like. So I kind of, yeah, I talked to her about God and stuff and I, I want to keep her close because I really want her to change. So. Yeah. Thank you, Joanna. So God's word says that, you know, you know, we can, you know, plant the seed, but it's the Lord that lets it grow, right? And so I, I, ho- I hope that you are able, that you were able to plant that seed and that you continue to trust the Lord that she'll remember those signs when you shared Christ with her. Um, yeah, any, anyone else? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I've tried. Uh, yeah, definitely. Typically, it ends up the same way as Eli. Um, like, they typically, um, what they, typically when it goes on, I try, they typically either... I, I typically notice it in them. They typically try not to get with that within, with me. They typically try to go to a different conversation, especially because like, there's so many of us, especially when we were at lunch table, there's so much, so many of us, so many different conversations happening. So like what some of them will try to do is like, they'll either try to like diverge to a different conversation, like by, like one of my friends is sitting, like the other day I tried to talk to one of them about Jesus and he, we were talking because we first we were having a normal conversation. Then I switched the conversation because I I was able to to God. And then he um, immediately on the other side there was a different conversation going on. He immediately tried to go and like start pitching in on that side, and I was like trying to get him to come and like like and I was like and I was like, well, I know you're ignoring me and like and stuff like that. And then there's another friend like when I'm at his house, right? Because we all because we've known each other and I know his mom and everything and. I mean, I'm at his house, like, when I get the opportunity, I try to, like, talk to him about Jesus. He always, he's typically, he's the, like, one that typically tries to, like, debate me on God or something. I'm like, bro, like, I just, can I, like, you know, on that stuff. And, like, typically it never ends well. It typically goes for a long conversation. And then we end up diverging from there and then going into something else. And uh, that's how it typically ends up. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. You might on this side. Yeah. So uh, I think um, you, got, you guys just heard from some of our youngest people here. Um, and the reason why I chose um, these uh, specifically is because I know that they have shared Christ with people in their schools. And some of those people that there, there's some people who um, they want to get plugged into a church. And so they invite them on Friday. So they, we've had multiple people come in. And, oh, I know them. I, I invited them, and they're coming. Oh, I have a friend coming. And so I know that all of them all have been inviting people from, from the school to get plugged into to a, lo- a local church. So as, um, in, in conclusion, um, God cares about our friendships. He cares about our friendships that we have with believers, and he cares about the influence and, and the, um, that we have on all those who, are, who have not put their faith in Christ. So I pray that as we leave here, that we leave her with a greater value of friendship and seeing that all that the Lord has to say about the friends that we have, and that when we go back to our workplace, we go back to our neighborhoods, we go back to our schools, we, see, we, we ask the question, Lord, how can I build a relationship with, with, with the goal of sharing Christ with, with someone? Dear Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you for, for friendship, God. We, we thank you um, that you sent your son um, not, not just to die, but to also live and show us what it looks like to live in relationship and to live with, with friends and, and, and to not just call them their, your, your servants, but your friends, God. I, I pray that we reflect that in the life that we live and how we treat and care for all those around us. Um, Lord, I, I pray that we grow in, in more love for you as we, as we learn to grow in more love for all those around us. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, fellas, let's, let's get these, let's these couches down. Cool. Like stuck. They're not your way. Amen. Amen. Isn't it great to hear our young people and their convictions? I don't know. I was convicted as a as it is an adult. So I was like, ooh. <laughs> you know, and so um but yeah, this song is um, about how God is awesome and how he works in our lives. 
and how he has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. And that includes the way that we treat our friends, the way that we treat the people who are in our communities. It, um, it, it, it dictates our thoughts, how, what we do with them. And, um, and so I pray that as you think about your own life and the way that you treat the people around you, that you bring it into submission to Christ. Uh, may you enjoy and may you um, join in um, this song. Thank you. <laughs> 